This is the zero hour, and this week's sign of that is the McCutcheon ruling, another step in the Supreme Court's hijacking of political democracy. You know, this is a conspiracy, and I don't hesitate to use the word conspiracy, that goes back to 1970, at least, and future Supreme Court Justice Lewis Powell's uh, memo to the corporate world, to the wealthy on how to seize and take control of the political process to the Federalist Society, which trained a generation of lawyers on how to distort, in my opinion, and I think well-grounded, distort the law and the Constitution on behalf of corporate and high net worth sponsors. This, this is the same kind of court, the same majority, the same plurality that hijacked democracy openly and blatantly in Bush versus Gore, even going so far as to say this decision is not a precedent. We just want our guy in. That's the court. That's what they did. And what's really striking about this decision is how strongly it goes against public opinion. Let's look at some of the figures on that, because I think it's important. 79% of those polled in one study support limiting the amounts of funds that political candidates can raise and spend. 79%, virtually, what, four out of five Americans. 71% believes the, believe the candidate with most money wins. Hello. That's almost always the case. And despite the fact that nobody's out there advocating public financing of elections, which they should, a Gallup poll showed that it already has the idea of 50% of the voters more supported than are against it. You know, there's a lot more statistics on that. Instead, you know, look, we've got a government that's not working for the people and they know it. Economically, 57% of Americans think upper income people pay less than their fair share in taxes. And they're right. 66%, two-thirds say the richest 2% should pay more in taxes. The richest 0.1% should pay a lot more. 73% believe corporations pay too little in taxes. And they're right. 69% believe that corp corporate loopholes for meals and entertainment should be eliminated. On and on and on and on. We've got a situation where the government is not respecting the public's views. The government is for sale. The Supreme Court is making it worse. You know, there was another story that I, I, I just want to mention to you guys right now. It was, it was an anecdote. Um, in uh, the New York Times, corporate lobbyists, a sale tax overhaul they once cheered. Now, um, there are a lot of quotes from different people here, but the one that caught my eye is, first, the New York Times writes, lobbyists say they have to be zealous because the tax code hits almost every corporate interest. They make millions, millions, lobbyists do jury rigging the tax code on behalf of their corporate clients. But here's the quote. Here's the money quote in all of this. If you are not at the table, you are on the menu, says Heather Podesta, a lobbyist whose firm Heather Podesta and Partners has at least 10 tax-related corporate clients. Now, Heather Podesta is very networked in with the Democratic Party. Of course, there are many, many lobbyists on the Republican side as well, but there are many on the Democratic side. It's where you go when you leave politics, for example, or when you're, you know a lot of Democratic politicians. Heather Podesta has been the wife of Democratic super lobbyist Tony Podesta, whose brother John Podesta worked for uh, the Clinton administration and then headed the Obama administration's transition team. Um, now, Tony Podesta and Heather Podesta are divorcing, which the, the, the salacious details of their divorce do not interest me. But uh, what does interest me, because you should know about this, is the enormous amount of wealth that's you know, I don't care about the other manner or whatever. It, 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 it's the enormous amount of wealth being contested in the Podesta divorce that offers us a glimpse into the world of the super lobbyists. Their multi-million dollar home in Calabama, which is a very nice section of Washington, D.C. The Heather and Tony Podesta collection of art, with, which is extremely valuable. The multiple homes, the, the other forms of assets and wealth. It goes on and on and on. So look, you know, it doesn't matter to me their personal lives. But what matters is that we have a situation, uh, you know, here, here's a salient uh, note here. Uh, Tony Podesta filed for divorce, accused his wife of 11 years of misleading him about the possibility of their reconciling when he paid half the down payment on a multi-million dollar home for her last March. You know, there are the, the multiple multi-million dollar homes, the different assets that these people have. Why? Because they know people who are in what is euphemistically and used to be honestly known as quote unquote government service. You don't think we need to get the money out of politics? 
Hundreds of millions are being made by lobbyists every year. You don't think we need to get the money out of politics? As Heather Podesta says, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Are you at the table? Am I at the table? You don't think we need to get the money out of politics? This is a corrupt system. It needs to be fixed. If it isn't fixed, we can't fix the environment. We can't fix climate change. We can't fix economic inequality. We can't fi fix the growing militarism of our society and the invasion and destruction of our civil liberties. We can't fix any of it unless we get the money out of politics, and we can't get the money out of politics until we change the system. So I urge all of you to do that, to reject politicians who buy into this corporate system. I'm R.J. Escal, and you can be sure that this is the Zero Hour.